do you find uh, computer vision, machine learning, uh, from the perspective of tooling, as an interesting tool for analyzing, for processing all the data from the neuroscience world, from the neurobiology, biology, the chemical, ever all the different data sets that you can have about the mind, the eye, the uh, everything that's neck and above, mm -hmm. and also the central nervous system yeah. and all. Uh, absolutely, I mean, I think that computer science and engineering and chemistry, bioengineering is, that's what's creating the acceleration and progress in neuroscience right now. I think it, it's actually one place where science, I'm very reassured, science has um, invited in psychologists, computational biologists, at least at Stanford, MIT, and, and other places too, of course, it's clear that it's a everyone's invited kind of party right now. Mm -hmm. That the major issue in the field of neuroscience, at least through my view, is that there's no conceptual leadership. No one is saying we need to work on and solve this problem or that problem. It's very fragmented right now. Now, the good news is people are communicating. So computer scientists and people who work on AI, machine vision are talking to biologists and vice versa but it's very dispersed. Is there a lot of different data sets? Like it, in your work that you've just come across, uh, is there a huge number of disparate data sets around neuroscience and so on? Or, Well, there's a lot of cell sequencing stuff. So the Broad over at, you know, in, on, in Boston, and then on this coast, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, um, what, you know, um, they did, you know, $3 billion to sequence every cell type in humans and in animals and try and, I think their goal is to cure every disease by some date, I don't know, in the in the future. Um, huge data sets of gene expression and protein expression, that's valuable. I think no one really knows how to think about neural circuits and what what is a neural circuit. Um, is it one structure? Is it two structures communicating? I think um, this is where I actually think that the robotics is going to hmm. tell us how the brain works because it it's tempting to think that the brain has all these cell types and circuits in order to solve specific problems but it might be that the fundamental algorithm is to create cells and circuits that can solve variable problems mm -hmm. we know in the retina just a very simple example is that we've always heard about like cones are for color vision and high acuity and rods are for night vision and and non-color vision but at the dusk dawn transition certain cell types switch to do completely different, have a completely different function for viewing starry night versus what they do during the daytime. So neurons multiplex. And I think building machines that can multiplex and can evolve themselves is going to help us really understand what the brain is doing. We need to tease out the fundamental algorithms. We know they're like motion detection and spatial vision and things like that. I think machines are gonna be much faster at that than our understanding of, biology and how the brain does that. Basically, I'll be out of a job and people like you will uh, have a job. No, well, no, the, yeah. I think the, the main idea is that uh, there won't be a job that's machine learning or uh, mm. as computer vision. It's just, it's a, it's a tool that neuroscientists will use more and more and more and uh, biologists would use. I mean, this whole idea that it will just be a, a tool that allows you to start uh, expanding the kind of things you can study. And well, the next generation coming up, I can say this because I, I now I'm blessed to have a bioengineering student. They think about problems so differently mm -hmm. than biologists do. Uh, we we realized the other day, we both came up with a set of ideas around a certain project and we realized that her version of it was the exact opposite of mine, <laughs> you know, and hers was far, far more rational. It's just an engineering perspective. It's yes. like, why would we do that last? We should do that first. I think that the, the next generation is really interested in solving practical problems. Yeah. It's a lot like computer science and engineering was in the late nineties. It was like, you can go do a PhD in computer science and engineering, maybe, yeah. or you go work for a company and actually build stuff that's useful. I think neuroscientists and people interested in neuroscience are starting to think, how can I build stuff that's useful? And this is statement is supported by the fact that many people in my business leave their academic labs, fortunately not all of them, but they leave their academic labs and they go work for companies mm -hmm. like Neuralink. Like Neuralink. Yeah.